Morning folks, we're just about at the end of week three of training now. Just got this 14k long run on the Sunday to do. And then that's it. Week three is actually the peak of the base phase, so we'll have done more mileage and intensity this week than the previous two. And the fourth week will be the kind of relaxed deload recovery week uh, where we should be doing quite a lot less. Check the state of the river today. Not bad. Not brown. There's quite a lot of the uh, riverbed showing through, so hopefully <laughs> the soggy fields aren't so soggy this morning. There's only one way to find out. I've got my route planned on Kamut for this 14k. Roughly out and back with a few detours to make it interesting. Um, and while we're out there, we're going to discuss today's topic, which is going to be how the winter weather is affecting my ultra training. Uh, up to now, the temperatures have ranged probably somewhere between about minus three and nine Celsius for most of my runs. Uh, I don't remember seeing double figures many times, if at all. Uh, it's about nine this morning, so we're not doing too bad. So it's muddy as expected, but all that running water in the tractor track gullies has dried up, so could have been worse. Headed into the woods now. The most direct route is this left-hand one. I always seem to get lost when I take that one. Or you can follow the edge of the woods that way. It's a bit easier to navigate, but slightly longer. So I'm gonna brave it. <laughs> yes, found the exit, first attempt. trying to keep running even on these steep uphills just because it's the end of week three I've got a recovery week coming up so take advantage of the training effect I can get from pushing things a little bit more on this final hard run so in terms of weather up to now we've had cold and freezing temperatures there goes a the squirrel <laughs> rain a bit of fog snow ice <laughs> Uh, yeah we've had the lot really in terms of winter weather but I've still managed to get out there and get every run done so that's a plus I think one aspect of winter training that is really noticeable is the fact that you're training in the dark all the time the sun sets uh, around the time I do the school run and I'm out with the torch on and then running at night really limits my route choices I tend to stick on the mainly lit roads there are some exceptions but heading out onto muddy tricky trails I just try to avoid because staying in the game is the main thing and injuries are the devil so I'm avoiding those as much as I can but uh, yeah, even just running on the roads in the dark can be risky got to relatively flat bit now so letting the heart rate come back down to top of zone two maybe zone three it was in the middle of zone four up the hills so can't keep that up so as you can probably imagine after spending the week nights still running on roads or little bits of flat trail if I fancy it at the weekend I can't wait to get out on the trails sometimes through the muddy fields sometimes on more flat places like the five pits here but yeah, that's definitely what I look forward to. Not that I dislike running on the road during the week, but I think my legs appreciate the break on the softer terrain. And uh, yeah, I've had sore shins and ankles from doing too much road running too soon uh, when I was training for the half marathon. So I definitely take that into account. Plus, I much prefer the trails. This is the start of Tom Hewlett's mile. Just about to see it on the signpost there. Here's a note about it. Tom came third when Roger Bannister first ran the sub four minute mile. Uh, they've set up a mile on the trail with a marker at the start and a marker at the end so you can run a mile in the fashion of Tom Hewlett 
I don't think I've quite got the sub four minutes in me and I think even Tom was close but not quite there because obviously Roger Bannister won and uh, he was third so he was a great local runner so he's got this to uh, commemorate his achievements so I do plan on doing a video about that one day see what we can do on the Tom Hewlett mile I've never pushed it on there before so could be interesting it's definitely not a flat route and then the other way that winter training has an effect is I have to try to make the correct clothing choices or whatever the conditions are I think I may be a bit overdressed today <laughs> I've got a base layer uh, t-shirt over that and my waterproof jacket on I'm appreciating the coat for stopping this cold wind <laughs> I feel like I'm not overdressed at the moment I'm just approaching the biggest climb on the Tom Hewlett mile go through this little streams valley and then we turn and head up that where I'm sure we gain must be 10 meters in a really short space of time so uh, you can definitely feel it by the time you get to the top luckily then it flattens out so as we enter the Phoenix Green Wave this is the other end of the mile just came from straight over there so for some reason I was to, just starting to go up that massive hill I thought oh no I've forgotten to have my flapjack at 5k started eating it as I jogged up the hill <laughs> trying to avoid joking to death not my best move ever and then just as I got to the top of the hill the 5k alert went off so <laughs> I hadn't missed it after all what a wally anyway I'll finish this the half a flapjack I saved from last week's long run and carry on I'm fairly sure this trail takes me under the M1 motorway from Derbyshire over into Nottinghamshire so that's where I went when I did the visit to the uh, the minor statue on the top of Silver Hill over in Nottinghamshire but went the cross-country shortest route that time this one's a bit easier so I think we can spot the motorway I can certainly hear it and my route will tell me to turn around just before the bridge I think there we go I've gone off the end of the purple line marking the route at the bottom there I'm under the motorway I always like to go a little bit past the end of the turnaround point to make sure it's registered that I've reached it and not just turn around prematurely and it starts saying you're going the wrong way <laughs> and I have to go back to tag at the end of the line not sure that's how it works but I was just paranoid about that so there we go okay so I've reached seven kilometers now I'm going to head back, almost the same route I came, uh, just a little bit of variety thrown in where there's detours I can take to make it interesting. So I think I'll leave you there, you can hopefully assume that I'll finish the 14k today and that will be the end of week three, successfully ticked off and then we can head into the recovery week next week, which should be nice and easy, getting us ready for the, uh, the next phase, but the base phase will be done by the end of week four. So that's good, making progress, and uh, I'll catch you next week. If you do want to subscribe to my channel, it is free. Just press the button and watch the subscriber count go up by one. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon.